Okay, very good morning. Thursday, 30th of January. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just having a quick look at the usual first starting screen. That is something we're very familiar with now, which is a quick spot check on the Wuhan coronavirus and where that's at at the moment. Uh, and you can see numbers still heading north at the moment, but I would say at a relatively controlled pace. We're at 7,783, total deaths at 170. So certainly, you know, I don't want to come across like I'm belittling this as an issue for the people obviously experiencing this on the ground in, in China and worldwide. But from a market's point of view, uh, I don't think this is too dissimilar to the type of pattern I think that, that people were anticipating. I know it's quite small, but here on the left hand side, you can see where the confirmed cases by region are. And as we know, still predominantly based in mainland China and surrounding regions. So in kind of chronological order of size of cases, Thailand, Japan, Hong Kong. If you scroll down to the bottom, though, USA, where the five cases first came about, I mean, it's probably about four or five days ago now. That number hasn't moved. Germany's at four, Canada three. Uh, so far then, other than Germany, kind of mainland Europe has been pretty much untouched. You can see here small little dots there in Fran France and Germany. So uh, a couple of things certainly we are looking out for on this matter uh, in regards to the World Health Organization experts. Uh, they were going to give a press conference yesterday. Uh, my understanding is that the experts will meet today uh, in Geneva to consider whether or not to declare the outbreak an international emergency. Uh, the organization then have 15 countries now with confirmed cases but um, irrespective of that you know even if they did go and take that step uh, how is that going to immediately move markets uh, i don't think so uh, it would be my view but as has been the kind of case throughout um, what we've been seeing is that certainly this is having an impact on the asia pacific session perhaps not so much as yet given those reasons about how aggressive or not the spread has been globally uh, it hasn't really quite influenced the other markets like it was back on Monday. Uh, this is just a quick look at the, the MSCI Asia Pacific Index. So this kind of clubs together then the region as a whole uh, to create an overview of that how, how that region is performing. And as you can see here, going back over the last kind of 12 months or so, uh, the, the, the key issue really has been Trump and the escalation of those tariffs and those various points both through kind of Q2 and Q3 of last year. However, that for the moment at least has been put aside as we have the, uh, the phase one trade deal, but the virus concerns certainly have had to be baked in uh, to stop prices and uh, a little bit of catch up, of course, given the kind of return of markets, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan and everyone else, I think have, have continued to see some pressure, but overall, uh, the point being it hasn't really spilled over into Western markets. Uh, so one to monitor going forward. For oil traders, one thing, the implications, of course, is that um, the more that economic growth falters uh, and in GDP gets impacted by uh, the significant uh, kind of impact of activity in mainland China and beyond, then demand for crude has got to be kind of reviewed. Uh, in respect then that you know, yesterday we were hearing from the, the Chinese government economist that was talking about potential implication of around a 1% GDP loss taking growth in China down to around the 5% region and that would be you know, lowest kind of levels that we would have printed in Chinese growth since around the early 90s so quite, quite unprecedented but I would say certainly not unexpected um, growth in China has been slowing for a, a long time and Wall Street estimates are for an equal sized impact as things stand at the moment in terms of the virus is concerned. Now, one thing this is leading to though is there's actually an OPEC meeting. So when all these oil exporting and producing nations gather, uh, that's set to happen at the beginning of March. But given this kind of unprecedented situation um, with the outbreak that's materialized with the coronavirus, that they're trying to bring that forward. And according to the Algerian minister, uh, potentially that meeting could happen next week because these oil producing nations will be m very mindful of the fact that um, they will want to be getting ahead of any potential downside issues, uh, particularly on the demand side uh, that might materialize and, and, and manifest almost if the corona, uh, coronavirus gets worse. Um, I know Sam's going to look at these charts, but just looking at some of the near term price action, we're not actually that far away from quite a key 
um, bottom end of the range of which we've been seeing for this week. And, and certainly this is the reaction to the reopening of trade in the virus. Remember, we gapped down in equities. We also did gap down in oil. And over that period, on that one very brief open on COMEX overnight session, we did print a low at 52.15. And we're trading about a 30 cent range of that at the moment. So definitely worth keeping an eye on today. But yeah, the oil ministers will be mindful that perhaps they might want to take action, deepen the cuts just in order to um, mitigate the potential weight that could happen in the price. And obviously that's that's not a good situation for a lot of these oil producing nations where their, their general fiscal break evens are being squeezed down at these low 50s, never mind if we start to break into the 40 handle. Okay, a few other points, um, just generally, uh, as you can see, uh, if you were looking at your charts back to the Fed last night, there's not a great deal of movement overall. Uh, I guess the one uh, equities were pretty unfazed, pretty similar in the currency market. If anything, gold was edging up and, and T-notes remained pretty well bid here in the bottom right. Uh, my overall assessment of the, the meeting last night was it was a relatively dull affair. Uh, if you did join us live last night, I tried to make it as exciting as possible, but I'm afraid that's just the nature of it. Um, it was very much going to be a wait and see meeting that kind of materialized. Uh, the one potential uh, soft dovish hint that came and perhaps has underpinned that, that rise in, in T notes uh, is that Powell said um, this idea of tweaking the statement, hinting at a greater resolve to hit 2% target. And the Fed chief saying the FOMC are not satisfied with the continued uh, over, um, undershoot. Uh, and what this would mean then is that there uh, is dovish in the sense that, well, how do you promote that? Well, you use looser monetary policy to try and uh, stoke inflation. And so that was a kind of a subtle hint towards possibly that. Uh, and that might explain that. But otherwise, it was pretty, uh, pretty vanilla. Trade uncertainty is eased, he said, though it's not disappeared. Global, glo global growth looks to be bottoming out with the economic fallout from the coronavirus still a wild card. So he didn't really... Uh, say much about that at all but that was as expected there's not much evidence here for him to make any real accurate assessment of it uh, and its overall implications just yet technical tweaks to the interest rate on excess reserves um, that was nothing really uh, unexpected and then they said they're going to extend repo operations at least through april and that fits within the timeline we already know so i'm not going to talk about the fed anymore it's, it's come and it's gone and we move on the main event then for today definitely is um the bank of england and, it, and it's set to be a, a quite an interesting one. And certainly it's going to be one where uh, I'm going to do a full kind of breakdown of what to expect and, uh, a bit later on this morning. But quite interestingly, people already it, <laughs> seemingly getting a, uh, a little ahead of themselves here. The pound already coming under a little bit of downside pressure. You can see we've just broken through uh, yesterday afternoon's low. Uh, and we're just bringing into target now the low that was seen uh, two days ago on Tuesday. Uh, we're just testing that now in the futures. So uh, obviously there's a, the, the risk, if anything, here is uh, we, see, we see the first rate cut in a while, uh, and that's what we're going to discuss. And I want to show you this one first. This is a, let me just transition my screen. This is a, uh, the change in expectations towards um, essentially markets expectations of what the action from the Bank of England could be uh, and this is looking at on the right hand side the percentage probability that the Bank of England cut interest rates and so this black line would show that throughout really all of 2019 the probability of the Bank of England cutting interest rates was was sub 20 percent um, now one of the things was we started this year and that remained the case if anything it was even lower because if you remember, obviously Boris Johnson managed to secure a resounding majority and that, if anything, kind of saw risks diminish on the near term at least about uh, this kind of disorderly Brexit because as we've seen, uh, the formality is, is that the UK will leave the European Union as of this Friday and we go into that implementation phase, but you know, it's all been relatively smooth thus far. The hard work's yet to come, so to speak. The problem that you've had, though, is that economically, the UK economy has continued to suffer. And the hard data, uh, things like GDP, as you can see here, uh, have been weak. Manufacturing, uh, industrial production, 
The PMIs generally have all been softening construction through manufacturing and services. And then you had quite an interesting interview by uh, Gerton Flieger, who was particularly dovish. And that did see quite a big uh, pop then in people um, increasing their bets that the Bank of England has got to take more immediate action. So this is that kind of forward guidance interpretation from these BOE speakers. Um, retail sales inflation data was kind of the peak of that. And we actually got up to around a 70% chance of a cut only around 10 days ago or so. However, since then, some of the more forward-looking soft data, particularly uh, the latest PMIs, have seen a bit of an about turn because that now encapsulates the period post the election. Uh, and generally then, if that's forward-looking and it's showing indications of people getting more positive about now the economic future, well then why the needs to cut rates now uh, why not better to see if wh whether or not that does indeed materialize economically because they're soft. That's our expectations and our confidence about the future. Um, so better not to perhaps wait and see. And what this has led to then is a repricing of this. Uh, and this is looking at basically short sterling, so shorter dated interest rate futures. Uh, and as you can see here on the right hand side, this is where rates reside, of course, in Britain at the moment, 0.75%. And there's a 55% probability that they're going to remain on hold. There's a 45% probability of a cut. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, this is kind of worst case scenario as far as the Bank of England are concerned. Because if you think about it, forward guidance and its objective is to be as clear as possible so that markets can be as prepared as possible so that if there is any type of policy change or tweak, that it can be digested in an orderly, calm fashion that does not create unnecessary volatility in markets. But what this is telling you is that it's an absolute coin toss uh, and markets are very undecided here, which means then, as we're going to explain later, that initial release of when the information comes out and it's going to be hold or cut and then the vote split that those two pieces of information that come out first are going to see absolutely wild movement in the pound in either direction, whatever they take, uh, because at the moment the market is not prepared in one way or the other. So definitely, you know, it's going to be a, a really volatile initial move. And overall, I would say you want to stay out of that because it's going to be incredibly messy and noisy. And then it's about the accompanying moves that happen thereafter. Uh, don't forget there's more detail in the statement, there's the minutes, then you've got the monetary policy report and the press conference. There's a lot of things going on uh, throughout the, the period of the hour thereafter to look out for. So don't get the FOMO when the market explodes on the breakout then as Sam's going to look at technically. It's almost as if the pound's been just, just simmering, waiting for this, this event. Uh, and so it's got to be tackled with a bit of caution. Um, if they did, and, and on the vote split, it's obviously going to be quite key, and I'm going to show you something in a second, but this looks at the voting patterns of the Bank of England uh, over the last several years. And as you can see here, obviously, the usual decision has been to keep rates uh, as they are. Uh, there has been the cuts that happened in, you remember, in uh, the period thereafter, the surprise e-referendum vote. And then we've had a, the rate hike, of course, that came on the kind of slow reversal of emergency low rates and so you can see that actual descents are very rare it tends to be quite close to either outlying you have two outlying hawks or doves but generally a fairly large cluster so it's quite an unusual situation to be where where we are um, these are the the individual candidates that comprise of the mpc and so as you can see here i don't think it's much a surprise given the economic situation generally in the UK, you can see that overall there is a tilted bias to the doves and the likes of uh, Jonathan Haskell and Michael Saunders have been dissenting members for a while. They've continued to buck the trend of the group by voting for a immediate rate cut for several months. Now, uh, Flieger is the gentleman that was in the FT a few weeks ago that was very dovish and hence the reason why he's over on that side. And then uh, Silvana Tenreiro has also made some dovish comments as well. Uh, the, the, the question really, I guess, to tip the balance is, well, uh, I guess Mark Carney, it's very rare for the governor 
to really break out into the smaller group, uh, the governor tends to sit then with the, the general uh, um, larger majority. But in this case, it is right down the middle. So could well be then, though, if Mark Carney goes one way or the other, that people like John Cunliffe will go with him and then that, that decides the balance. Now, for me, what, what do I think is going to happen? Uh, well, for what it's worth... I think the Bank of England will hold interest rates. I do not think that they will cut. Um, I think actually it's going to be really close, though, uh, the closest one in a long time or recent memory. I do actually think that it's going to be um, five. These five chaps here are going to say we should hold. And I think these four are going to say we're going to cut. I think, if anything, I think the most probable scenarios are either five, four, or six, three. Uh, so Tenreiro is maybe the, the perhaps the one that's a, a bit uh, could swing either way. But I do think we're going to hold today. I think better tactically for the Bank of England. I think this will be the overarching mindset that they wait uh, to see whether or not uh, the the positive bounce post election, from a sentiment point of view, and the soft information we've had holds true and also how Brexit starts to unfold as we start to get in the crux of the trade deal with Europe uh, and other trading partners. I think they'll want to keep some ammunition. Now that's all well and good with the vote split. Remember the vote split will determine the initial severity of the initial spike. If it was to be 7-2, and I'll explain this, I'll get my, my chalkboard out later, uh, but if it is 7-2 that would be in a sense incredibly hawkish for a hold in that sense and you get a big spike in the price so the actual split composition is going to be quite key as to that first move uh, I did do a quick poll it's only about 60 votes so I wouldn't read too much into it uh, but I put it out there this morning just to the general Twitter community what do you think is going to be the course of action today 7-2 hold 6-3 hold 5-4 hold you can see that's where I, what I'm going for or a five, or four or five cut, so they actually do cut rates. The most probable, according to uh, you guys, is that they're going to do a 6-3. And I'd say that probably is the, uh, the actual Wall Street average of what they think uh, the split will be today. But again, it's more than just this. This is only one part of this. The actual tra more tradable part, I think, is beyond the spike and what they actually say thereafter. Um, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, Morgan Stanley, they think there's going to be no change today at the Bank of England. Deutsche, Barclays, NatWest, they're all predicting a cut. Um, and one of the things you're probably going to hear is that if they cut, it's probably going to be a cut in rates, but a fairly more hawkish commentary to just signal that, look, they're not in ultra accommodative mo mode yet. They're just looking to just tackle uh, the recent situations unfolding economically. But if they do hold, it's probably going to be accompanied by a relatively dovish monetary policy report. Again, this is the management of market expectations. Okay, moving off that, a quick run through of a couple of earnings reports. I did tweet all of these from the Amplify Trading account this morning, so I'm not going to go through all the details. Just going to give you a very brief overview. Basically, Tesla's shares are, are pretty much parabolic at the moment. Uh, I, I got a chart sent to me from Will um, last night when their earnings came out. Uh, and I thought I was looking at Bitcoin, but it was Tesla. <laughs> and Tesla Tesla basically up another 6-7% last night. You know, their, their share price has just gone crazy uh, in the recent few, uh, few weeks. Uh, I think everyone needs to just do a little Cisco shakedown, Elon style, and, it, and apparently your shares just rocket higher. But yeah, Tesla really strong last night. Microsoft equally so. Uh, Microsoft shares were up about 4%. Uh, again, exceeding earlier all-time high, quarterly revenue topping estimates by more than one billion. Again, winning some really big flagship uh, cloud contracts. The, the demand on that side continues to be incredibly impressive. Um, Facebook, though, the opposite. Facebook shares actually fell about 7%. Uh, yeah, social media network user gains stagnating in the US and Canada. Uh, revenues increased, but actually it was a, a, a in, in looking back in previous quarters, quite slow pace. Still a lot of pushback on general regulation, uh, regulatory environment to their privacy concerns and so on. Uh, other earnings in Europe, it's also been equally busy. Uh, a quick run through, BT down about 5%, Shell down about 3.5% at the open, adjusted net profit miss. They've also uh, slowed down their buybacks. Deutsche Bank down 2, LVMH negative. Uh, Unilever, maybe a slight initial sweet spot at the open, up about a percent. 
Uh, so earnings season definitely in, in full swing at the moment. Um, calendar wise, uh, obviously the focus for us is really the Bank of England. Uh, before that, you do have the, the German state CPIs. A couple of those have already come out this morning. And to give you a flavor, Saxony uh, minus 0.6%. It's on the month to month reading, but the Saxony year on year 1.8 up in the previous 1.4. Um, so yeah, keep keep an eye out for those. I mean that's a that's a decent lift uh, month or year on year basis. Uh, that might provide a little bit of support for the euro. Let, let, let's wait and see. Uh, you'll get the others: Brandenburg, Baden-Württemberg, Bavaria, Hesse, and the rest coming out all the way through up until 9 a.m. You've got the German unemployment change in rate uh, worth keeping an eye on doesn't tend to be that market moving uh, but certainly as per usual rules apply anything on the outlying uh, stretch of the range uh, needs to be needs to be monitored you can see though the range for the unemployment change is very wide uh, minus 29k to plus 15k expectations for plus five uh, as I said Bank of England really is is where it's at for today is the main event and then also this afternoon you've got the advanced reading of GDP coming out of the US uh, which is going to be particularly interesting. Remember, this is the advanced reading. So this is the one that's important that will be potentially market moving. Expectations are, if we look at US GDP, that basically it prints the same as it has done at 2.1%. Uh, however, you've got a range of 1 to 3. And as far as GDP data is concerned, that's a fairly wide range uh, of estimates. So uh, definitely 130 that's going to be quite key that's alongside the regular weekly jobless data but really that gets brushed aside as people will, will lock in on the GDP number um, that's what I'm going to talk about actually I'm going to hand you over to Sam I think that's enough from me uh, and, and let's hear what Sam has to say from a, a technical viewpoint okay thanks very much guys and I'll see you for the Bank of England later Yeah, hi guys, looking forward to, uh, to the Bank of England later. The pound this morning actually just coming under a bit of pressure, uh, whether you want to get involved and trade this before uh, the announcement or not, uh, I'm not too sure. But let's have a, a quick look, we set that longer term chart, the bottom part of that trend line just coming under a bit of pressure now, where we close the day will be key uh, and the chart will, will tell you really what happened uh, and almost be able to tell you the vote as well. If we have a look over at this trend you can see you know depending where you take it now we're almost bringing in this uh, one just using the bottom of the uh, the 8th of November and the 27th just testing that I know this one we had on before was really well respected we couldn't close below it and again didn't close below there yesterday uh, but certainly testing uh, that and 130 now and all those lows I mean what an area of support it has been does it go today or not uh, time will tell. A break of that, just be aware of all of these you know, potential lows where price you know, could get to if, uh, if we were to have a, uh, a way more dovish uh, result on that. If it holds, just put it onto the 60 minute now and you can see here quite a key resistance point just over the last couple of sessions around 130.46, certainly uh, a level to have marked up there. We'll go through all of this of course ahead of the uh, announcement there's a couple more uh, key resistance points 13060 as well that I'd uh, be wanting to to have marked up pre uh, prior to to that release and then we've got a trend line coming down from the top as well price really getting squeezed and you can see here already just a, a little reaction to that trend and the low that we had from the week and even below there obviously you've got all of this uh, area of support so the pound uh, I'm not too interested in in trading it now uh, it's, a, it's a wait and see and prepare as much as possible for that. The Euro uh, finishing yesterday, uh, well, I would say the fact that we finished above uh, the low that we had back on, what day is it, when Thursday, Tuesday is quite key. Uh, however, we are still in this bit of a, a trend channel, if you like, over the last few days. So I don't think it's enough just yet to get too excited about wanting to buy we're just coming to the top end of the the morning range you can see here the high that we had during the, the Asian session overnight we're just testing that now the lows are in place as well it's uh, a small range only 12 ticks or so but quite a key level 10 uh, 1 10 48 was also the high yesterday morning uh, as well uh, above there just of course be aware of that FOMC 
uh, uh, spike of the initial dovish reaction uh, there to, to come in. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the, the euro, because of, I'm just putting this back onto the weekly chart, because of uh, just the key levels in play, those trend lines, the dollar index as well, as, as Alex was saying last night, is a bit uh, overextended. Uh, we could be in, in time. Just getting ready for a bit of a pullback here. You can see those the trend lines here on the daily. Again, can't close below those. It wouldn't be too much of a surprise to see a bit of a retracement. Not saying I'm going to be looking to necessarily buy the euro, but preferring, I think, to sell uh, this market a bit higher up uh, would be would be. Uh, would be what I'd be looking to, to go for. Having a, a look over uh, US equities uh, this morning, it's coming under a bit of pressure. Let me just bring in uh, that chart. You can see here on the daily, back down towards those lows, and well, I mean, what a uh, what a resistance that was there on the the gap close. Uh, just shows you know how important these levels are. You know, you can say whatever you want about the fundamentals above that. You get a, a you know a, a decent rally higher. The fact that it holds, well, why on earth would you want to be looking to to buy if it can't do that late last night? And we were doing the the FOMC and we're saying, you know, because it's so uh, slow and such a non-event, do not get long unless you get that 15-minute close above. And you can see it absolutely did not do that. Um, and of course, that is the nice reversal uh, to come in and. You know, whether you took that on or not, if you did, fantastic, you're, you're living the dream right now. But let's have a, a quick look at some levels below where we're trading. Really, it's a bit of a zone. 32, uh, 32 is the bottom. Uh, and then you've got, obviously, the lows that we're trading at now for around 32, 45 and a, and a bit. Uh, a bit of a trend line did break yesterday. So if we were to have any retracement uh, into the morning, afternoon, just keep a, a watch on any point that could come back there if we have a look longer term you've got the level market uh, that could come in uh, around 32.18 bit of a horizontal support point and then the spike the low of the year 31.81 uh, as well you'd look, look to have on there uh, and of course these trend lines you can see if I just bring that in already chopped through but that longer term one and this is where you know there's arguments to buy little dips here and there I don't think it's a market where you can necessarily hold uh, for a longer period of time just because of that uncertainty but I absolutely would love to see an opportunity to get anywhere in and uh, near 3100 of course that's a still a long way away um, so maybe 3150 or 3181 uh, again that low of the year could be the opportunity perhaps having a, a look over gold dropping it down 60 minutes uh, the market that doesn't want to go down at the moment really resilient to uh, any push lower got quite a lot of resistance up where we're trading though so perhaps just have that that patience even if that r1 goes just be aware that you do have the high from uh, the 27th evening and of course then the uh, 28th as well just on that so a bit of a resistance zone if you like before uh, looking to, to get in just because R1 breaks I wouldn't be looking to buy put it like that especially given the morning uh, the way it's uh, traded recently though you can see it breaks the high comes back and, and retests that so uh, a nice uh, sort of wave higher at the moment trend lines from the lows you can see here would also match up potentially with the previous high from yesterday around 1579.8 that would be something I'd be, be half interested in uh, there uh, as well oil Back down to the low, just printed uh, there uh, a new low for the day and having a little bounce on uh, the low from the, the 27th low from the year. Looking at this on, on that daily, um, we were saying, you know, is that the low in? I, you know, unless it was to get above, I think it was one of the resistance levels or previous lows, I wouldn't be too confident about calling that. But I think if we can get down towards here, let's just mark that area, right, 51s. I do quite uh, look like the idea of as long as the price action suggests it that this could be the bottom of such a key level. However, if you're, you know, bearish, a break below there could really run down and, and see uh, a big change in this market. But yeah, I like that area to, to find some support. Let's have a look 60 minutes, just have a, 
a quick bring in of the pivots to give us a bit more of a sense of direction over the last couple of days. You can see we double topped yesterday. We filled that gap as well in early trade and couldn't really confirm a breaker above any of those levels. And like the US equities, we drifted lower. Uh, so keep a, a watch on those lows as well. 15 minute trade chart now to keep a, a close watch on yesterday's low, which is actually some nice resistance. You've got quite a lot of uh, levels that we just stalled before breaking through and of course on the way up they could uh, offer levels of resistance on that retest uh, as well probably by the time we do if we do i should say uh, push high there'd be nice trend lines in play that could uh, guide price action but for me 51s 51 dollars and then a few uh, cents either side uh, for me looks like a, a nice area we could find some sort of support Today, likely to be dominated by the pound from midday, but it will also be interesting to see, see, interesting to see what the stocks do. Dow down 200 uh, this morning, uh, but has much changed overnight? I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of a bounce. The DAX here hit that low, uh, the coronavirus low, if you like, and has had a, a decent enough bounce from there. If that is to break, well, you've got these lows uh, from beginning of the year as well to, to start to, to point in. Hope everyone has a, a good morning. We'll catch you all uh, just before midday uh, to go through the Bank of England. I'm looking forward to uh, it. Uh, it's set up nicely to, to be uh, one with good opportunity.